It's what's in my phone gallery, and I've decided to call it WimpG. It's a bit of an insight into what's going on in my life uh, while I'm not making videos directly for this channel, but now I kind of am because this is a video on my channel. <laughs> it's nothing like what I thought I would write down and say. I've got Kristen in the background. Yay. <laughs> Smooth. Let's have a look at some things. Washing shoes. Washing shoes. <laughs> Strong intro. Strong intro. What are we going to learn today, Craig? Uh, you can, you can... Isn't that my favorite crock pot? Yes. No, it's Craig's crock pot now. It's my shed crock pot. Have you ever washed shoes and you need to dry them? It's a pain in the ass. It can take days, sometimes lots of days. My son's shoes were wet. He needs to wear them to school. And I'm like, oh, good. I got a solution for this. Not like the heat garnering. You can, you can burn things. You just need that subtle heat for a long time. So you get the shoes and you put them in a, a crock pot, a crock cooker. This one accommodates two kids' shoes nicely <laughs> and two adult shoes, I found. The lid didn't quite fit. It worked awesome. The whole house smelled like someone <laughs> had done a burnout. <laughs> Did you come I, home when it was I, the whole I, house smelled like burnout? It smelled like burnt, like burnt I, rubber. I was... probably did, and I probably did not even question it. I probably was like... <laughs> you pro it's probably the tail. I think, yeah, I think I got home and I'm like, whoa, this is... This Not is bad. Unusual. This is. It's surprising that you can still surprise me. <laughs> One day, One. shoes are shoes are ready, ready for wearing. <laughs> ready for eating. <laughs> <laughs> so we were out at a what would you call it? Like yeah, like a science museum. We're on our feet all day. Kristen wore thongs or flip flops or jandals, depending on what country you're in. See, I've learnt all the names now. Typical thong blowout. Now there's this old thing in Australia where. They reckon to fix it if it if the plug pulls out, you use like the bread thing. That's a crock of shit because plug comes off half the time. So if the lug completely comes off, what you do is you push it push it through. You get the remaining piece and you split it through the middle it, with a pocket knife or something. Split it. Then you just need anything like some sort of splint. I think I've used some sort of coffee stirring implement here. And the other thing is a hair lackey. Chopped a hair lackey, and then you bind it up, fixes it. And that lasted the whole rest of the day. And then the next day, I was still wearing You chose so to had, still I, wear it. I hadn't had it's a chance a to go to the shop, and what am I gonna wear, runners? No. You MacGyvered the shit out of that. Oh, jeez. Because you were quite distressed at the time. Oh, it was like the kids were sticky. being difficult. Oh. Kristen blew out a thong, and she's oh, just like, F this. Uh, so in my first update video, I casually mentioned things that are kind of neglected around the house while I make YouTube videos, like our broken sink taps that aren't working. Still haven't fixed it, or have I? Good old, what do you call them, grip lock pliers? I don't know, I think it's the main name for it. Yeah, fixed it right up. My daughter has put a little sign there just to minimise embarrassment when she had people around. How to make tripods in, I believe, 40 minutes. I knocked these up for um, cat video number four. I need a few tripods for the cameras I have out there. They're made out of pull fence, bits of flat bar, a couple of bolts, really dodgily cut and welded together, but they fold up. They fold up. So a proper tripod's hard to make. There's sections that slide into other sections. These just flip around. You can put them away, get them out when you need to because cats are invading your backyard. What's in my phone gallery? Let's see what else we got. All right, pool hacks. So this is, a, this is actually a handy one if you've got a swimming pool. When we found a crack in the pool, which was tiny and you couldn't really tell if it was a crack or not, you get some printer ink and you put it in a syringe or something, put it under the water of the pool and you, you let some out near, near the crack and you can see if the water's going out and you go, yeah, I found the crack in the pool. Solved. Put that in a book or something. <laughs> Next thing in my phone gallery, what do we got? Made an air box for a computer that is zero dust. Zero dust in the computer. If you've got a computer, you probably know how badly it gets filled with dust. I didn't want that, it's got a computer in the shed. So tackled that one and actually worked out pretty good. So I might do a standalone little video for that. Let me know if you think I should. It looks a bit dodgy, but yeah. I do lanyard sailing and when they're on a big dry salt lake, 
They use these little whirly bird wind turbine things that reflect the sun flash. Similar design to what they use to deter birds from some buildings. They just spin around, just flashing all day long. And I'm like, oh, I'll have a crack at making one of them for Nate. And yeah, it turned out good. It was extremely irritating. Everyone in the house hated it because you just constantly think someone's arriving at your house. You know, like when the, the windows light up when someone's car windscreen flashes the sun through your window. This uses bits of plastic from like an old chlorine bucket and some cups, the bottom of some Coke bottles, and just spins around and flashes in your face all day long. A bit like Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> Had a couple of design variations. Got one that uses a pedestal fan as well. And just a bit of tube on the back. Flashed great also. Lots of flashing wind turbines. Productive day, productive day. Just wondering what else you could use this for, apart from irritating people. Mm, probably nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got a few travel hacks here. So, going to Greece mid last year. So they've got this thing where they don't know what a stubby holder is. You, a beer, if you want to keep it cold, you put it in a stubby holder. That's what we call them in Australia. I think there's a different name in the US. Lots of countries have it because you don't want warm beer. You don't want your warm hand heating up your beer. So you do that. Makes the drink stay cold longer. This concept does not exist in Greece. There's, we explain it to people and then it's like, what? I had to improvise different ways while we're over there. This one turned out pretty good. What you do, like a chip packet, this one was a popcorn bag, wash it out, turn it inside out, wrap it around your beer, couple of hair lackeys, and you got yourself a cold beverage that's reflecting your body warmth out of there. Did you try it out? No, you wouldn't let me, and you didn't make me one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think there might, there might have been one chip packet. There were multiple chip packets, Craig. <laughs> this is a handy travel hack. So in Europe, they like to have the handheld showers. In Australia, and I know a lot of other countries, we like to have it on the wall. Uh, the Europeans will normally have both. It's normally on the wall and it can go handheld as well. We stayed in a few places where it was just handheld, so it would just be like on the ground or whatever. And that kind of sucks. So I worked out is if there's a shower curtain, you get a shower curtain ring off there and you can make it like this, if there's something to hang it off. There's normally something in there, even off the curtain rail itself. Next photo in the photo gallery. Oh my God. <laughs> you remember that I one? I know what my mum just did. Okay. She will flip out. Yeah, I don't think she knows about this. When you're away and you've got your camera, you know, wind noise is a bit of a problem. So we had a proper microphone that had the wind sock on it. Everything was all good. We dropped the camera at one point, the microphone died and then we're using the internal built-in microphone and that needed some wind protection. So I managed to improvise with some foam and a hot glue stick, which I also took on our travels for situations like this. But if you need foam and you're traveling, what you do is you just get it out of the cushion on the whatever chairs are in your hotel. Unzip it, take the foam out. And if you get a really sharp knife or scissors and you just kind of take a veneer of foam away, and then you zip it back up. No one ever notices. And then you can make whatever it is you need to make where you need a little bit of foam, like a windsock. No deposits were lost. And we had ourselves a little- Until they see this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Did we have a deposit? We probably had a deposit. We've got, we... it, we've got it back. We got now. it back. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the windsock. <laughs> Filters get stuck on cameras sometimes and drones have a little tiny camera and a little tiny filter and they get really stuck. Uh, one way to remove them, this is while traveling as well, uh, you get a cable tie and a rubber band. Wrap the rubber band around the lens filter and the cable tie, do that up and get it off. When you're traveling, and I know your family have picked this one up, I always take cable ties. Cable ties everywhere, always. Kids are a bit bored on the school holidays. We have a drone. Worked out a way to drop paper airplanes from it using the existing camera as a trigger. So I think normally to have like something drop from a drone, you need to have something separate transmitting to it. This worked quite well, just a series of wires that are hooked up similar to a rat trap. Rat trap inspired. But yeah, it worked great. Camera's facing forward, make the camera look down, drops the plane, kids have fun, the plane disappears over people's houses. Kids are sad. <laughs> Daddy's making more planes. I can't believe how far that plane went. I reckon it went about 
four or five Ks. My friend is restoring an XM Ford Falcon. I just thought I'd chuck this image in there. Kristen decided to try and see uh, if she could fit. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> It's not big, it's the angle. <laughs> but you can completely fit in the footwell of a of an XM. This is how we normally store you in the car. All right, that's it for what's in my phone gallery. Wimp G, if you have any questions about any of the things or anything that you would like me to expand on into its own separate video, probably nothing in there. Let me know if you think I should do this more often and I'll catch you next time. Oh, can you get rid of that photo of my <laughs> Sorry.